We back in the Layup Lounge, episode 11, second episode of 2024. Come on. With my guy Wayne. How you doing today? Chilling, How you doing, man? All right. Hey, Come man. Bless. Couldn't be better. I'm chilling. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. Let's do it. You know, this is one of the biggest headlines of the year was John Moran being suspended. He recently returned. And now, just after nine games, he is out for the season with a torn lane room. Man. Kind of, kind of take us back. Kind of, not even take us back. Kind of just describe what the Memphis Grizzlies should do from here. Now that their season is definitely over. Now we thought we already knew it was kind of over back then, but just how you feel now about the Memphis Grizzlies? What do you think they should do going forward? Uh, they should start sitting all their players. <laughs> Jaron Jackson, there's no reason for you to be out there. Marcus Smart, you got a couple years. I know he just got hurt too. He's out seven weeks though. Yeah, might as well just sit him down for the year. Let's just sit every everybody with some meaning to this team. Let's sit them down. Let's think about next year. Let's let's get some G League guys out there. See if we can find a gem. Um, let's see if we can find some guys that like to really play. But other yeah. than that, this year is it's a wash. I mean, let's, there's no hope at all. So they John did. Morant was like their only glimmer of hope to actually get them to the play in or like flirt with the playoffs. And I mean, he showed up and he was showing out early, like game winner, first yeah. game back. Like he was he was back. He was John Morant. I'm um, doing his little dance. But. That first week that he came back, he won three games that week. At that time, that was more in still. That, it's, that was as much as the Pistons had. That's insane. That was more than the Pistons had at that yeah. point. He got three wins in one week, and the Pistons had two. And he came back immediately, impacted that Memphis team. Nah, but He's a game changer. And so, yeah, yeah let's, let's sit everybody down. Let's think about next year because – it wasn't going to really happen this year anyway. So now that it's really not happening, let's let's not even play with it. Okay, but my question is, who are you going to sit? They already got nobody. So you can't you can't sit down there. I mean, yeah, like you said, Jaron Jackson. Let's I mean, it's early him. though. It's early. Okay, it's, but we don't have our guy. We don't, the bell the hope of this season was the bell cow coming back 25 games in. He came back, there was a glimmer of hope, and now he's out for the season. Let's there's no point. Like what what Desmond Bain, you going to really get us there? <laughs> Two hundred million dollar bang. You, I mean, he's hoping, but he's at the same hoping. time, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get us there. He's like, a role, he's a role player. I feel like we okay. talked about this already. To me, he's a role player. How do you feel about Desmond? Bain? When Ja comes back next year, if he still is playing the same way, it's he's he's not a role player. He's a he's a good two. He's a B. But he's not an all star though. You think? But it's like it's weird because right. I guess I guess okay. He so he's not. A, you think so? He In the Western Conference, he could be a all star. He could be an all star. I think so. The same way Clay know. Thompson used to be an all star. Or just how they were put respect on but shooting. But Clay Thompson was nice. Desmond Bain's not nice. He was. He's nowhere near Clay's prime. I'm just saying, if the Grizzlies roll out next year like they are, and they're going to come out top three in the West, top top two in the but West, gotta, and, they're, you, and they're rolling, and Desmond Bain is averaging 25 points per game, 23 points per game, like you can't say he's not an All Star. But you got to think about it like this: there's so many good guards in the um, in the Western Conference. That's what I'm saying. A lot of the times, like we talk about, like a CJ McCollum. We talk about uh, even like Mike Conley when he was at the Grizzlies. He wasn't an All Star because there's the guards in the West was just so stacked up. It also goes. I think it goes back to media though, and the media plays a big part in this whole All Star thing. And the media, the, this Grizzlies team is getting a lot more media coverage than those old Grizzlies squad. And so I think because they're getting that media and that attention, he's going to have a better bid at being an All Star. And I think he's already going to be down there for All Star Weekend he, in a three point contest. So might as well just. Is he? Him in the game. I mean, I mean, he is every year. He. I mean, I mean, if Kyle Korver made it one year, I guess why not, right? Desmond Bain, Desmond Bain is all star. He could be an all star. But it's like, yeah, with this Memphis Grizzly team, I'm just like, like you. I mean, you're just talking about sitting down everybody. This sucks. I mean, we hate to see injuries happen, but if it was gonna happen, it should have happened last year. It could have had a chance at a Wimbenyama last year. I feel like yeah. the, all these injuries taking place, all the suspensions and all that. I think this happened one year late. Cause there's nobody in the draft right now that we're hearing about that's that desirable. I beg to differ. Okay. There's, there's another. Uh, I don't even know his name. I just know there's another French dude. Sar, I think. You seen Alex him? Sar, yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks kind of yeah, scary. He, he looks. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie. He hey. looked. Hey. Uh, what we're seeing right now. Hey. hey, Sar. Yeah, he looked cold. No, he looked Come cold. The um, and then even I think in the next draft it will be Flag, Cooper Ooh, Flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's that's not this year. That's next year, 2025. So yeah. 2025 might be stacked up, but this draft ain't really getting, you know, no its respect. So yeah. we'll see what happens. I think that's I, – I kind of like that, actually, because then we're going to be surprised about a few guys that come out that's always fun. for the next year. Yeah, because yeah. we don't really know none about anything uh, related to the draft as of now. 
So, but yeah, now nah, the Memphis Grizzlies, I mean, yeah, this season's definitely been washed. <laughs> I don't know why they dropped Kenny Lofton just for know. all this. Uh, That's crazy. You know, this know. happened. They, they, him up. they signed a random. I forgot his name. Uh, and then Vince Williams Jr. You see him? Yep, yep. Yeah, I have no idea who this guy is, but <laughs> hey, shout out! Man. Hey, you said play the G League slash nobodies. I mean, hey, he might make a name for himself. Hey. But yeah, uh, hey, we we'll don't see. Have our, they, they don't have their guys. Sit them down. They they go pull a Golden State where they were bad for one year, get a draft pick, come up, and that's crazy because I mean James Wiseman was nothing. James Wiseman was nothing. But, uh, yeah, Memphis, y'all down bad. <laughs> so Seattle legend. Pete Carroll out out with the Seahawks. They gave him an advisor role. They basically said, you can't, you don't have to leave, but you got to get out of here. Got to get out this head coaching spot. Um, we know he won us a Super Bowl 10 years ago. That the Legion of Boom, legendary, legendary coach here in Seattle. Mm-hmm. But we can't talk about all the good things he's done mm. without talking about the Super Bowl against the Patriots. Mm. One yard line. We have the best running back in the league at the time. He got us to the end zone, basically. He got us there. He was probably set up to win MVP. Then boom. He decides, Pete Carroll decides that we're going to throw the football. Russell Wilson agrees. They get the interception, the Patriots do, and it's over. With that being said, this is a basketball show. <laughs> <laughs> what but <laughs> what is the NBA equivalent to that choke job done by the Seattle Seahawks and Pete Carroll? Uh first and foremost, I just like to say thank you, Pete Carroll. <laughs> uh, everything you done for the city was real. Legend for show. Legend for show. Time to move on though. Time for some new blood. Um, that was one of the dumbest things we ever could have done. I mean, that was just yeah, there's no answer for that. Like, we never should have done that. That's one of the dumbest plays that in, is the dumbest sports, play in history. sports history. No, you think so? Just because of, like, the, that's why it's hard for me to really think of an NBA equivalent because this yeah. was, like, the championship, <laughs> like, right. this was, like, the pinnacle moment. Like, we were literally about to repeat. Like, we yeah. were about to be back-to-back champions if you hand it off. Yeah. And they surprised everybody and threw it. And so, for me, I think it's just having, like, thinking of, like, an NBA equivalent. I think it's just having like a fan base have their their soul snatched yeah. just like by a, a heart wrenching moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think we were talking about it briefly earlier. I think the Spurs uh, against the Miami Heat, yeah, um, and the Ray Allen shot. I know we all see the the Miami Heat fans react in the stadium once Ray Allen hit the shot, but um, it was it was they were ecstatic in there. But Spurs fans were just probably like WTF, like what just happened? And coaching wise. Coach Pop decide to take out Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's in there. He might have would have grabbed that grabbed rebound board, instead yeah. of Chris Bosh. So coaching wise, that's a little bit, you know, that, well. yeah, that's questionable as well for sure. Man, but just for their fan base, like have, thinking they have like the series away. Yeah, like you're about to beat this elite team. Yellow like, tape is, out. Yellow tape was out. Yeah, like this is supposed to be like, and the Patriots at the time, they're like a dynasty. The Miami Heat, they're a dynasty. It's just like that. It's a lot of weight on this game. And it's just like insane play that wasn't supposed to happen. Like what? And theirs might even be crazier because like LeBron missed. Like, so it was just all like he missed. And they're like, oh, we're good. And then Ray Allen. Oh, it's it's Ray Allen. Like, bang. Shooting drill. Literally just a shooting drill. But that's that's still one of the craziest. If you really just look at that shot, like no, no dribble, just catch, step back. Hundred thousand, whatever shots, like, ugh. Yeah. Green, so I mean, crazy. But what about you? You got one? Hmm. It's tough. Cause it is tough because it's heavy. Because like... I feel like with it, with the coach, because I like what you said, because there was also a coaching decision behind what happened. Because Tim Duncan not being in the game is just like, dude, what are you doing? That's, yeah. Right. But I mean, in terms of like, like gut wrenching, like heartbreaking moments, I mean, you got to look at that 3-1 mm. choke job, you know, the um, Golden State Warriors versus the Cavs, only because they had, at that time, the greatest season ever. They go 72-9, and nine, and then, you know, they get up 3-1. They're one game away. Literally, and they even got to a game seven at their house, and they couldn't get it done. 
And I mean, even looking at the game towards the end of the stretch, you let Steph Curry let's Kevin Love out of all people lock him up. I was about to say that's the moment, right? I was about to reference <laughs> that exactly, but that's the moment right there. You let yeah. Kevin Love lock you up for a possession, and you know, they went away from what got him there, especially towards the end. They're just trying to get up a three and said that now was they were hunting. But I mean, just that choke drive in general, they talk about oh, Draymond Green's the reason why Draymond Green came back. For two more games after that. Two more games. Chemistry doesn't get lost after one game. Yeah. You implement him back in the game, and y'all still lost. So I you can't really blame him being suspended for that. Um, I mean, that has the coaching got to be involved in that too. Steve Kerr, there's some mistakes that were being made. And but at the same time, they got Kevin Durant out of it. So who knows if they regret you know, have any regrets within that line. But in terms of just, like, heart-wrenching moments, I think that's got to be – that's got to be up there. It's it's either the the Kevin Love locking up Steph Curry because that wasn't supposed to happen, yeah. or the LeBron block. Uh, like, those are the two, like, moments in that. Like, all, although the 3-1 encompassing it, like, those are the two moments where it was just, like, what just happened? Like, LeBron flying from, like, half court to block Iggy's layup was insane. And like, they – and then coaching-wise, I would say this, the thing, you know, they had, they should have known the switch was coming. Like Kyrie, you know, Clay should have been there. So it should have been Clay instead of Steph. But they, you know, shout out to Ty Lue. They knew they wanted that switch from Jr. Jr. was guarding Clay, or excuse me, Clay was guarding um, Kyrie, and then they made that switch. Come here, and baked him. Come here, <laughs> Get baked him real quick. That Kyrie shot or the Ray Allen shot? See, it's tough. Because personally, I think I'm going Kyrie. I like Kyrie shot a lot more, but I think like more difficult. I think for sure Ray Allen. I think difficulty Ray Allen for sure, just because his his was the second shot, no dribble in the corner, hard contest. Kyrie's is prettier though, just because he was on the island and it was just it was a he just a routine shot for Kyrie. Like that's normal. But in history, it's just like. Oh, and history just if, carries more yeah, weight. Yeah, like which one was like, damn, like that's crazy. It's gonna be Ray Allen's. I feel like you think so. It's still Ray Allen's. I, I mean, feel like we always because everyone talks about the pivotal moment of that game being the block. So I mean, like when you talk, when you weigh those games, like everyone always forgets Kyrie hit the three to put him up. Like I think the block set up the shot, didn't it? Was the block first? Uh, yeah, the block yeah, was the block first. was first. Yeah, because yeah. they were tied. Still, they they couldn't. There was like a four minute stretch where nobody no was scoring. Scored, yeah, so the block, and that's like the that's the one defining moment of that game. And it's like that's so I feel like it's tough for Kyrie's shot to outshine the block. Whereas in everyone knows Ray Allen's shot is the shot that saved Cause he, LeBron's legacy. Because he back, <laughs> yeah, because he backpedaled. He could have stepped, and he had, he was on his toes because he could have stepped out of bounds. Yeah, but he shooting drill. Like I said, I'm gonna take Kyrie's shot just because. It was in a game seven, coming back from three one. Yeah, that was the game winner right there. And I mean, even going back to like game five, him and LeBron, that like forty one and forty one, insane. All that the lead up to that shot. Mean. Yeah, all that the lead up to that shot. Um, I just think in, I don't know. You can even argue that was a more difficult shot. It had. I, I actually. That's his to shot. me, it, I don't know if it was. Yeah, I don't think it might not even be an argument. I think that was a more difficult shot than Ray Allen's shot, just because he that was off the dribble. I mean, Ray Allen is he's just backpedaling. But Kyrie, that's his rhythm though. That he is off the dribble. Like that was just. Thank you, <laughs> Steph Curry alone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, they was they was hunting him for no, sure. Hunt, yeah, hunting that's the him. special. Yeah, um, it was reported by Shams that's uh. Amidst the Warriors' recent struggles, everybody is available. Everybody's on the table. Everybody's on the trade block. Um, send us your offers, except for Steph Curry. That's that's what the Warriors said, pretty much. Um, Roman, if they are really doing a fire sale and blowing it up midseason, or yeah, what do, where do you think everybody's going? Where's Wiggins headed? Where's Thompson headed? What do the Warriors want back? What is it looking like? Hey, well, you – you proposed a Canadian national team Come on. out in Toronto. I can see Andrew Wiggins going back to Toronto. Something in a Pascal Siakam trade. Um, you know, package him and Kaminga. Bingo. Maybe go get Siakam. Maybe a Gary Trent comes back as well. Um, 
man, I think that Clay Thompson, I wouldn't. Because I don't know. Maybe Golden State might be interested in somebody like a Jeremy Grant if they couldn't get a Pascal. You do a swap there. I don't know if Portland does that, though. We don't need a Clay Thompson, but. I personally don't think it'll be a fire sell. I think it's just letting the league know that you give us a good offer. Like, we'll get off. Like, we're not attached to these players as much as you guys think type. I think that's more of the message, more than just, like, we're trying to get rid of these guys to extend 30s, you know, playoff legacy. Um, So, yeah, I think that there has to be good, significant, a significant package out there for them to get off them. But if they were to get off them, I think that, yeah, they should go get a Pascal, maybe a DeJounte Murray, maybe a Zach Levine. But if I get Zach Levine, I want Caruso in that. that mm. I feel like that's got to be a package deal for me. Um, but I think that this is necessary, to be honest. I think that they need to be more open-minded on what they want to – what type of organization they want to be for these next – probably like three to four years that Steph's going to be in the league. Like, yeah. if you're trying to win a championship or two while he's here, I think this is the perfect opportunity to go do that. Yeah. Pascal Siakam is going to say the Warriors. I'm telling you right now. Pascal Siakam yeah. is going to say the Warriors. You think, you think they're training Cameroon? It's weird because they just said they don't want to trade Kaminga, but now they're like, we're getting off everybody yeah. if, it's, if the, the price is right. So I'm just like, I think for what's on the table right now, I think Pascal Siakam, he, one, he's a gem up in Toronto. Like, he's a winning player. He just – he needs a different scenario. And I think inside, outside, it's perfect for him and Steph Curry. So. How do you, how you feel about Pascal turning down the king? He said he want to sign an extension, right? He said he wouldn't – yeah, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't sign, sign if he yeah. went to the king. So, yeah. I uh, thought that would be a not bad fit, like, hoop-wise. Like but he might not want to live in Sacramento. <laughs> I, think, I think it was more about that than yeah. – I don't really fit. like it hoop wise either though. Like I don't know. I feel like Siakam, his shooting as a he's a nice he's a shooter. Like Siakam could knock that thing down. Pause. But um I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> but um I don't know. I just feel like Sabonis, him and Sabonis wouldn't gel too well together. I don't know. I feel like too much inside action. It's another one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even talk. Hey, hey. I can't even talk. Hey, hey. We got a call. Yo. That's crazy. Um, yeah, and the interest in DeJounte Murray is kind of weird. Like, do you think the, the Hawks ain't the Hawks ain't taking Chris Paul and Moody? Yeah. It's terrible. That's women Yama got his first NBA triple double. Um, and he was the second fastest triple double in NBA That's history. Like twenty one minutes, right? Yeah, twenty one minutes. Um behind the one and only Russell Westbrook, um, who did it in twenty. <laughs> Crazy. I don't even know how you do that. As a guard, yeah, that, bro. bro. He was out there doing everything in 20 minutes. Bro, they, the hey, hold on. Before you, there was, like, all the bigs. Like, there's no way Steven Adams is on your team and, like, Russell Westbrook is getting more boards than Steven Adams. Like, they were letting him get They was letting board. him, yeah. yeah but, I mean, at the, that's still – they was boxing out, letting right. him go. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knew. Um, Well, that's – just give me your reaction to that. Like, what's your immediate reaction to his, his triple-double and the fact that he actually did it that quickly? Like, I mean, he's, he's 19. Like, what? I mean, we'll talk about this, right? He's been hooping, but I think that the Spurs are using him incorrectly. I think they should be trying to feed him as much as possible. I think the fact that they're a worse team now than they were last year is unacceptable. I don't know what's going on there. Pop might be washed. I don't know why. I would have thought he'd be excited for this opportunity to have a player like Wimbyama. Obviously, he signed an extension after they got Wimbyama. Like, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, but him personally, Wimbyama, I, he's been hooping. He's been hooping. Um, I still don't think he's better than Chet. I think Chet's a better basketball player than Wimby, but. Um, Ricky Ladder has Wimby up one right now. And that's fake. <laughs> that's fake. That's the that's the highlight factor you were talking about, right? Like, I think that's, that's BS, man. I mean, so in some cases, BS. You got to give these awards to the better basketball player. It, it can't be just, oh, he makes us the money. Yeah. He gives us the highlights, the highlights. So, yeah. But no, nah, I mean, that's very impressive. I'm not that shocked, though. I mean, he's like 7 4. Like, you should be getting boards that fast. The assist, the assist is the most surprising part, though. I think that that's impressive. I think if he adds, if he has that more in his game moving forward, hopefully the Spurs surround him with better players and he'll get that amount, assist, amount of assist cons- more consistently. But when you got Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Shohan in the corner three. Like, what are we doing? Like, I'm not kicking it out to Jeremy Shohan. 
um Keldon Johnson, Olympic gold medalist Keldon Johnson, which is that that shouldn't even That's be crazy. a thing. I don't know why. I don't know. Pop put him on the team for what? No, we... <laughs> put him Hermitism. put him on the team for what? And in all this just to get packaged up to go get DeJounte Murray back. That's you know hilarious. what I'm saying? That'd be that'd be crazy. I'd like it for the Spurs though. Just like being around the sport here in Washington, like seeing all the talent in our state. Just tell us like a brief one of your favorite stories just interacting with somebody that's made it to the league or that was in the league. Like whether they're a player or like a coach or what was that like? Um, I don't know. I mean, I played against – I'm trying to think about who I played against. I played against, played against KP, and he was probably the – I didn't have too many interactions with him on the court. I mean, there, you know, a lot of a lot of shit talking. To be honest, I mean, there was one game where we're at SPU, and I think I want to say it was like districts or something. It was playoffs somewhere, and he hit three windmills in a row. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Three windmills in a row. Like you, it was crazy because he hit one. We come down the court. Our point guard makes a bad pass, and he's in the passing lanes. Another one. Comes back again, gets the ball again, bro. It even was three times, bro. It was it was even tw- it was twice or three times, but like multiple times oh in a row, bro. God. It was crazy, multiple windmills. Um, <laughs> what else? I played against Marshawn. Bro was just lining this up from three. I'm like, what year was that? This was my senior year. Okay, this was my senior year. So he was one of the guys on beach. Okay. Um, yeah, cooking us from three. I'm like, God damn. Um. Let's see what else. I'm trying to think of one of my favorite memories is I remember my junior year. Um, we were playing against Garfield. B Roy was the coach at the time, and well, he's a legend, by the way. But I just remember I didn't think I was gonna play that game because this is the game to like go to state, and Coach Poops me in the game, and I hit two threes. One of the threes, or I think after the second one, I hit this one. But I was looking at I was looking you at B Roy. <laughs> I was looking at, I was looking at, I was looking at B. Roy. I said, I remember Coach Kev was like, "Bro, bro, chill." I was like, "Nah, I'm barely playing. I'm, I'm, oh I'm getting high." I was like, "Hell no!" You, at Brandon Roy you see, you see the rip seat on the chest right here. Like that's that's one of the ghosts for real, bro. I was like, "That's my chance. That's my opportunity." Um, that's funny. <laughs> oh, and outside of high school basketball, this ain't okay. So AU, um, my team was, we were just, we were all right. We weren't great. We get into the Vegas tournament. We find out, I think that day, we're in the C bracket. In the and for this Vegas tournament, the C bracket was like the third, like the it was a top tier bracket. And they, my itty bitty AAU team, they put us in there. We played against Chris Paul's team. <laughs> these dudes, uh, they didn't win it. It was after. <laughs> oh, these dudes won Peach Jam. These dudes won Peach Jam. Like the the, the UIB, bro. They had commits from everywhere like yeah. i don't even remember who's on that team they just had dudes and i remember we was warming up and then all of a sudden um you you wouldn't even i mean you could guess it chris paul shows up i didn't think he was gonna show up because it was like a late game yeah we was at this random gym he shows up they start praying like he immediately they go in there they go a prayer circle i knew it was raps from there i knew it was raps and then um we start playing I think we only scored like 40. I had like 25 of our 40. But every time I scored, I remember looking at this. I was like, <laughs> I was looking at him every time. I was looking at him every time I scored. Hey, I was looking at him every single time I scored. I was low key baking him too. I was getting lucky. I you got you got to have that little motivating factor. Like, I'm yeah. about to put on a show. Like, and, yeah. And then after the game, I remember he shook my hand. He's like, I, lo- I like your game. That's I like, like, yeah, I was like, that's crazy. That's and then he crazy. ran to the black SUV after that. He had, he had to dip <laughs> he out. Had to but, get out of there. But nah, hey, it's crazy. I know you got one, though. I um, know you got one, though. No, I think one of my prime memories is for sure um, freshman year. Yeah, no, it was freshman or sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Um, DeJounte Murray uh, and the Beach Boys, they showed up to the O'Day Gym, all black sweatsuits on. All black uniforms, bro. They showed up and they was they was dunking all over the gym. Like I remember, um, what's his name? Shadid threw a, a lob off the backboard. Dejounte caught it right in front of our students. It was just disrespectful. But I was like, that was an iconic moment because I was like, this is insane. like this team is good. Like they're crazy. I didn't oh, even yeah. think Baby Boy was that good at the time. But then like you see where he is now. And I had but- that same feeling. I had that same feeling about 
I had the same feeling about Marshawn. Me too. But like, he got better. Yeah, but he got he good. He, a lot. Yeah. Because he used to, in high school to me, he was just a shooter. Like, yeah. He didn't really go in the paint. He didn't really do much in the paint. And then. He went to Yakima. Yeah. And then Kevin Porter, from junior year going to his senior year, like, he improved. Right? Like He was, yeah. He improved so much. Yeah. I was like, God. Damn. Like, no, he was. Because I remember that summer league, even in summer league, him going to his senior year, he pulled up in sweats. Like he wasn't really trying. Yeah. And then we seen that highlight tape versus South. That first game. Oh my God. And I was like, yeah. And then yeah, he was killing that whole time. That's what I said. He gave us those those windmills. But I know, <laughs> hey, tell that uh what the Michael Porter. Oh no, yeah. Michael Porter, uh junior story. When he came to Washington and they made a super team at Nathan Hale. Brandon Roy was their coach. Marjan was on the team. Uh bunch of dudes that were like went to college, played college hoop. You remember PJ uh post on Instagram? Taking my talent. I'm taking my talent. hell. No, nah, it was shiesty. Bro, out here. we was making commitment. It was getting shiesty. Edits out here. for high school, <laughs> dog. It was crazy. It was crazy. Everybody's going to Nathan Hill. <laughs> so, uh, also, sidebar Jonte Porter plays for the um the he? Raptors. Does he? Yes. Is he on the real? He was getting rotation. No, he minutes. wasn't. Yes. Bro, I, no, hang I on. I swear no. to God. Was he really? Because yes. I remember, I know he got hurt a few times. He got signed to Memphis. He he must have got released from Memphis. But he was guarding Anthony Memphis. Davis the other night. <laughs> <laughs> getting swag, huh? I was like, was getting, I was like, last time I seen you was guarding Doug Russell. Now you got <laughs> Anthony Davis. Dark line was out the door though. Michael right. Porter Jr.'s parents could even get in. Nick Robinson was in there. Uh, Macklemore was in there. Those are just like the bro, two yeah, like yeah, Seattle. Dudes. Yeah, every but like bro. it was packed out. It was crazy. So we're in the locker room pregame, like we're getting hyped up. Like we're like, we're finna shock the world. Like we're finna shock the world. Yeah. Like they're, they're showing up here thinking they're big stuff. By halftime, we're down 50, right? Like, <laughs> it's not looking good. Right? And, and, and mind you, we were we were nice this year, we right? Solid. We were nice that we year? Were yeah, we, we weren't good. We didn't do much. But we, oh, were, we had a talented roster. Because that was your junior. Yeah, yeah. Because my freshman year, that's when they made that's when we So made that was the first, next year after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were low-key sorry. But, like, we had, a, we had a talented roster and enough to, like, compete. Yeah. Um. So by the time I check in the game, it's, like, midway through the third quarter. <laughs> we're down, like, 55. Um, so they start. Coach empties the bench. Coach Kurt emptied the bench. Um, he puts me, Doug, Shay, a bunch of the football dudes in. We all go in the game. Um, did Q play that year? Q didn't play that year. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> but um, so I check in the game, and mind you, we Coach Kurt, we only run man to man defense. I sub, I sub in the game. We're running a, a three two zone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we've never done this before. Like we've never practiced uh-uh. those zone. I was like, something's off, right? Yeah. So I'm on the I'm on the top right corner of the three two, and Michael Porter they're at the, the other end of the court. Michael Porter inbounds it to PJ, he dribbles up court. PJ pitches it right back to Michael Porter Jr. on the other side of half court, and he just pulls up. Bro, he would, bro. Our my, gym was small though, but yeah, like bro, he was pulling from. My he feet were on the three point line, and he did look from deep, <laughs> bang. bang. Like my contest didn't even matter. It was just hand down, man down. Um, and yeah, he proceeded to score fifty on us. Also. I remember because I was I was doing the book. That game. So I was there. I was doing the book that game. 50. I remember B Roy and all them. He had 49 at one point. <laughs> and they're like, How much he got? Boy, I was like, Yeah, he got like 48, 49. And he scored one more time. And then that's when they cleared up the bench, bro. It's so disrespectful. That's disrespectful. I remember, I think it was at the buzzer of the first or second quarter. I remember he pulled from half. Splash. Splash. I was like, Yeah. They was dunking. They was shooting threes. They was throwing alley oops. They was getting steals. They was embarrassing us. Is what they was. That doing. team was garbage outside of him and him. Jonte was gone. Marjan went there too. He didn't get no tips. No, though. he didn't. He didn't but he no he got he got a little bit of run. But yeah, run. but like that PJ team, was nice. Like the starters were nice, but yeah. like their bench was like the kids that been there for all their all years, the- waiting to play varsity, and then Michael Porter Jr. transferred to the school. It was like yeah. leads them to a championship. I remember that's so random. He was supposed to come to O'Day. He toured, like yeah, he toured a couple places, didn't he? Like he was supposed to. He was supposed to come. I think the, I think I don't know if it's cursed. Somebody said the only reason why he didn't come is because he couldn't homeschool from. Like if he went to O'Day, he would have yeah, had to come, come to school. Him. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't homeschool from, from O'Day. Me and him were at the free throw line, and um, I what's it called? Noah missed the free throw, and like I, I pushed him in his back, and I got the rebound. But they called like a lane violation on somebody <laughs> else, right? Yeah, and then he started complaining. He looked at the ref. He's like, "Hey, ref." Michael Porter, he's like, hey, Riff, watch the push in the back. And I was like, I mean, hey, me, hey, me, I'm like, this is my chance. I was all like, I was like, you're soft. <laughs> and he was like, huh? And I was like, you're soft. And he's like, he said, quote, verbatim, we're going to have to blank this out. 
nigga, who are you? <laughs> oh! Hey, my my, my oh. bike. Oh, oh shit! Uh. Me, it's I said. I'm first team on league defense. <laughs> first team on league defensive end. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm first team on league defensive end. He said, oh, for real? I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. My low-key favorite player to watch that year was CJ Ellaby, though. I'm not oh, bro. for sure. Bro, the way he was, that man, was, he was carrying that team, bro. Talk about a bucket. He was carrying that team, bro. With the left? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, my junior, yeah, he was carrying. My junior, he was carrying. Oh, yeah, he was. Like, Took him to state. That team was not that great, but I remember when they played all day. He was baking that nigga Josh. This <laughs> 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 guy CJ and the play. There it was like they took it outside out of bounds. So two seconds there, bro. Bro just literally just gets it, cuts in front of the dude, passing it to him. His hands were straight up like this. Sweat green, green beans. And shouts out to him too because he just got his jersey retired. I don't know if I've seen, seen that. I've seen but, that. Yeah. Hey. Definitely, man. It's been another episode of LL. Make sure you do your due diligence. Do your due diligence. Man. Like and subscribe. We at we at the one twenty range, so we, we we getting up there. We climbing a little bit. I know it's it's little. I know it's little, but pause. I know pause. it's little. <laughs> it's little, but hey. No, you just part of the OG squad. That's all it means. No, you like, you was an OG, yo. You rock it early and often. And we right now we at a stage where we we looking at we're looking at the count every day. We know who's doing, you know, we know who's watching. We got some good stuff coming for our fans, too. Um, Phenomenal stuff. We got some stuff. good stuff lined up. Uh, we got, We're going crazy, man. All we, you can do is just do your due diligence. All you can do is just, yeah, be here for the ride, man. Be here for the ride. The ride. And we out. L's. L's. Come on.